As I said, I'm the House of Prayer director. I've been here for 15 years, and uh, my passion is prayer. My passion is being with Jesus in this room day in and day out, week after week, in our prayer room. And so what we're gonna do tonight is what we call an intercession set. So it's a time where we come together corporately and we pray and what we feel like the Lord revealed to us years ago is a way to do what we call enjoyable prayer, which is we mingle worship with prayer. And so tonight what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pray from a passage of scripture in the Bible. And uh, as I pray, I'm gonna take just a couple minutes to pray the topic and then the singers, these lovely singers up here, Lauren and Crystal and Jonathan and Beto, they're gonna sing around what I just prayed. They're gonna sing short antiphonal phrases, little kind of popcorn phrases around the, the passage that I just prayed. And then eventually they're gonna land on a chorus. I'm assuming you're the chorus leader. So Lauren has just been dubbed the chorus leader. One of them will come up with a chorus and they will begin to repeat and sing that chorus over and over and over again. And in that moment, that's where your part comes in. The, you'll see the chorus go up on the screen and we want you to sing the chorus because what happens when two or more are gathered in my name in an agreement, pray the same thing together. We have whatever we ask and God's will is released in the earth. So this is a really powerful way to have unified prayer. The entire room, if every single person in here will engage their God-given gift called a voice and sing the chorus that they're singing, it becomes unified prayer in a very powerful way. And so this is important. We're not just here to watch the worship team or watch me up here praying. I'm trying to pray and lead all of us in the room together. And when they sing a chorus, we wanna sing together. And so the, the band will begin in just a second playing what we call a cycle. They'll play a certain chord progression and they'll kind of, you know, come up with a musical thing for us to follow. I'm gonna pray over it. They're gonna sing, we'll pop a chorus. You guys sing the chorus, I'll pray again. We'll do another chorus, sing the chorus. And then after that, we're gonna do small group prayer. Where we break up into small groups of two to three and pray. And then after that, we'll go into some more worship. And then we're gonna do communion. Casey, our uh, gatekeeper's pastor, our young adult pastor is gonna come and give a word on communion. And so that will be a really encouraging time. So let's do this. You ready? You ready? Let's pray. All right, so let's all stand up. Let's engage. I'm going to be praying. If you have your Bibles with you, I'm going to be praying from Matthew 9, verse 15. And this is, you know, what we're doing here, we call it GBF, our Global Bridegroom Fast. Every month, the first Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of the month, we fast as a community. And it's a specific fast where we long for Jesus. We take time to push, push the meal away, skip the lunch or the dinner or fast all three days, however the Lord leads you. And we go, Jesus, I'm going to in engage with voluntary hunger to remind myself of my spiritual longing for you. And so I wanna pray from this passage about, you know, where we get this idea of global bridegroom fast, fasting and longing for Jesus. All right, so here we go. Matthew 9, 15, Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, then they will fast. And also 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, Paul says, Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. So Jesus, we come before you right now as a company of people, Lord, longing for your return. Lord, we look across the landscape of the earth and we see such brokenness in the nations. We see men who are hopeless and without God. We see injustice. We see abortion and sex slave trade, Islam, Lord, great deception in the earth and our hearts are weighed down. And ultimately, Lord, we know these things, Lord, wickedness will increase in the earth until the day that you come. And so we ask, Lord, as you mature us as a bride, 
longing for our bridegroom, Lord, we ask that you would stir in us a longing for you, Jesus. That as we look at the things in the earth that grieve our hearts, as we feel the hunger in our soul, Lord, I ask that you would direct it to you, Jesus. Direct it to the place of prayer. Direct it into your word, Lord, where we've tried to satisfy that longing with lesser things, where we've tried to seek other things, even good things, work, productivity, finances, relationships, or even sinful things, Lord, to fill that hunger in us that, that really belongs to you. I'm asking you would set it right, Jesus, that you would stir us in our inner man to long for you, Jesus. You would grace us to hunger for you, Jesus, to mourn for you, as you said here in this passage, that when the bridegroom is taken, that when you went up to heaven, that would be the time that we would fast and mourn and long for you. So I'm asking you, Jesus, here at Gate City, the church in our city, Lord, I'm asking that you would cause a longing for you as bridegroom, a longing for your return, Jesus, to rise in us, and that we would be given, Lord, into the place of prayer. We would embrace longing and voluntarily fasting and seeking your face, not being given to the things of the world. Help us, Lord, to direct our appetites to you. So I pray in Jesus' name, you would cause a longing for your appearing to increase in us. It's a longing in our heart for the return of the bridegroom. To increase the hunger and thirst for you. Increase the hunger and thirst for you, Jesus. Help us to embrace hunger and thirst for you, Jesus. For your presence, in us, longing for you, stir in us, longing for you. We beckon your return, we beckon your return, stir in us, longing for you, stir in us, longing for you. We beckon your return, we beckon your return, we beckon your return, stir in us, longing for you, stir in us, longing for you. We beckon your return. We beckon your return, stir in us, stir in us, stir in us, longing for you. We beckon your return, we beckon your return.
where we're seeking to fulfill our hope in this life. Lord, I'm asking you would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, Jesus, that you are coming back, that our hope as believers is in your return, it's in your appearing. I'm asking you, Lord, you would direct our hearts, our appetites, our hunger, our longing to that day when you split the sky, Lord, and you set foot on the earth. You promised you're coming back. You promised that you're gonna gather us to yourself and that there's a day ahead of great reward, of justice that will fill the earth, righteousness, that your throne, that you're seated on in heaven, you will bring it to the earth. It will be seated on the earth and the earth will be filled with righteousness. I'm asking you, Lord, our hearts would long and ache and look forward to that day that you would stir in us a longing for your return, that we would hasten the day of your returning. I'm asking you, Lord, here among these people, Lord, you would fill us with a great hunger for the hope and the glory of your coming. I'm asking you, Lord, Christ in us, the hope of glory, that that hope would burn in us that day when you return in glory. So Jesus, would you fill us tonight and would you encounter the church in our city with a longing for your appearing, the hope of glory in Jesus' name.